This started happening to you when you were 10 years old, yeah, terribly it's... young. How did you meet this man? Um, through social media. Um, I would joined, joined a social media site um, and he contacted me through there. So what was his initial contact? What, what kind of language was he using? He befriended me and he really came down to a, a child level and spoke about the things I was interested in, like music and school and playing games. So um, he, did, he did try to make himself into a friend. And how did that make you feel when you were having those conversations? It was quite nice to have a friend, really. I didn't have many friends my own age at school, so it was nice to have somebody older who took an interest in what I was doing. So it made you feel a bit special? Yeah, it was, it was really nice to have a, a, a friendship with somebody. So when did those conversations start to turn? Because eventually they became more sexual, didn't they? Quite quickly, really. Um, he started to manipulate me um, and began asking for images, which at the time I thought was normal because I didn't know that that wasn't, wasn't OK to do. And he convinced me that actually I should be sending these photos to him and that would make him be my friend um, even more. Mm -hmm. And did he tell you to keep this friendship a secret? Yeah, he told me that um, if anyone found out, they'd be very cross with me. Um, so he put the onus on me that actually I was in the wrong. So this started when you were 10. It went on until you were 16 years yeah. old. Yeah. So in that time, he obviously started to ask to meet up with yes. you. Um, did you at any point tell, want to tell your friends, even though at this point you thought, this is nice, this yeah. man not likes me, were you excited? Do you want to say to one of your friends, oh, I'm going to go meet him? Um, when I first met up with him, I was absolutely terrified. Um, I'd never met up with somebody before, and in the back of my head I had the messages from school saying that it was really dangerous to meet somebody from the internet. So I took um, a friend with me, but he very quickly made her, made her leave, so it was just me and him. Um, which was absolutely terrifying and obviously by this point um, it's quite sexual uh, and he had really convinced me that actually this this was going to happen and this was fine and I would be in trouble if anybody found out about it. And this would have been your first sexual experience with this man? Yeah, yeah. And you were terrified? Absolutely terrified. It was, I was 12 years old um, and it was sexual, sexual abuse. Um, why do you feel you couldn't talk to your family when you started to feel terrified yeah. and you started to think as you got older obviously yeah. this is not right yeah why do you feel you couldn't talk to your family people who are abusers are just so scary and they really manipulate everything that you do um and they manipulate how you feel and how you think and they just completely turn it around and convince you that they're, they're not in the wrong and that this is fine and that actually when people find out they'll be ashamed of you and not of them. And you believed him? I believed him, of course I believed him, I was so young. So how did it stop? Um, well there was police involvement when I was about 12 um, but unfortunately it didn't, didn't result in a prosecution although the police tried really hard. Um, and then after that because obviously he didn't get prosecuted everything he'd said had come true and I was in the wrong and nobody believed me. Um, and, you know, obviously the police believed me, but it was very hard to get a prosecution. So it was, um, it, you know, it felt like everything that he'd said was true. So it did continue for quite a while, um, up until I was about 15, 16, when I went back to the police. Um, he, you found out he was married with children. He obviously didn't tell you that. No. Um, did, he make, did he make you believe that that's what would happen between you and him, that it would be a yeah. after you'd get married? Yeah, when I was younger, he um, really did tell me that this was love, this is what marriage is going to be like. Um, and even when I went to the police, he was still messaging me saying, when I get out of prison, we'll get married. And so it just, you know, even when the police case was ongoing, it really did continue. And I suppose you had no other experience. You thought this was what love yeah, was Yeah, I thought, it, like. you know, I just thought that was what it was. It wasn't, you know, people around me weren't in relationships, so it was um, difficult to distinguish, really. I know that um, you've met the, the cast of Corrie who were involved in this storyline with, with Bethany. Um, do you think they're doing a good job of representing what actually happens with these grooming stories? I really hope that they will. Um, and meeting with the actors, they were very keen to... to play the parts accurately to give um, survivors and victims of sexual abuse um, something to, to watch and think that it is realistic and for people to watch and think, 
actually, if this is happening to me or someone I know, then it's not OK. And talking of that, you mentioned the word victims. If there's anybody watching today, and we mustn't forget this happens to boys too. Yes. Yeah. If there's anybody watching today or parents who yeah. have got concerns, what would you say to them? Just tell somebody. Tell somebody you trust or phone Childline. Um, just tell somebody, even if you're not convinced it's abuse, even if you think that you're in love with them or that they love you, you need to tell somebody because actually when you're in the situation, you, you can't recognise it. You can't recognise it to know that it's, it's not OK. Well, thank you so much for talking to us today. And if that helps one person yes. today who might find themselves in a similar situation, it would have been worth it. Thank you yeah. so much, Lucy.